In a universe where blades and magic clash, you'd think things couldn't get crazier. Well, meet Elizabeth, the demon queen who rules the world, but with a royal temper that makes PMS look like a pleasant breeze. And just when you thought humanity might stand a chance, they're too busy backstabbing each other to notice they're getting wiped out. But hey, even demon queens have their issues, like dealing with a legend who'd rather be farming than fighting. Grab your popcorn. This isn't your grandma's fantasy story. This is a universe of legends using blades and magi, the legends mainland. At the present time, this spot as of now has an enormous scope huge conflict occurring because of the evil presence Sovereign Jump starting a hard and fast conflict against the races. With the assistance of the Devil Sovereign's severe strength, the evil spirit Sovereign's military resembled a hot blade through spread in their assaults and the domains of the different races tumbled to demolish consistently. Rapidly, just humanity stayed relentless in their obstruction yet tragically, on account of the inner struggle and uprisings among the people, their realm fell alongside their protections and the people were requested to give up, very much like that she was named the most grounded devil sovereign ever, Elizabeth as well as gotten her situation as the main ruler on the planet. In the human domain, an educator, Cart tells Elizabeth to not believe she's one with this by itself since she will be crushed by their legend later on very much like in the legends. The human sovereign, wise Malfoy kicks hand truck in the face and menacingly advises him to get things straight since this moment. Her highness isn't requesting his perspective. She's providing him a request. Pushcart irately calls him a patricide committing. Foe inviting deceiver of mankind and says he even developed him as though he was the forecasted legend to no end. Wise changes his hand into a startling beast's and proclaims that he will allow Cart to join his dad since he misses him to such an extent. Elizabeth suddenly advises Wise to remain his hand and he prevents only an inch from Cart's eye. She comments that he said he will stand by the human side from here on out and it will end in the sovereign's loss. She orders him to make sense of what he implies and pronounces that she has one thousand distinct ways of exacerbating him than death. Hand Truck frantically declares that the prediction expresses that when the predicted legend takes out the sacred blade, it will be the day the evil spirit race's rule reaches a conclusion. The blessed sword is the sword implanted in the stone foundation of the primary corridor however he won't ever tell any other person since he won't ever deceive mankind. Elizabeth peers down at the blessed sword Alpha and questions in the event that the legends recount the legend getting the option to challenge her since he takes out the sword. She dismisses and strolls back to her lofty position, commenting that she anticipates him showing up here. As the years went by under Elizabeth's rule, the security at the palace gats, prepared to confront any peril gradually dispersed and was at last taken out in the fifteenth year. Under the evil spirit sovereign's outright rule, every one of the past practices and the imbalances among the races were totally abrogated and everybody had the option to get along on equivalent standing. Without debates, everybody had the option to live in harmony and concordance and grow together. Rapidly, the legend's mainland started flourishing and thriving. Also, in light of the fact that they feared the uncommon harmony being obliterated, a wannabe collusion arose and fearlessly dismissed the appearance of the forecasted legend. In the evil presence domain, Elizabeth inquires as to whether they have any fresh insight about the forecasted legend's appearance. He chancellor of the mythical being race, Twillier reports that the mythical being race has proactively prepared all the tree bugs to look yet they couldn't find a solitary snippet of data in regards to the forecasted legend. The chancellor of the bantam race, Heimerdinger makes sense of that the dwarves are not truly adept at gathering data, but rather as indicated by what they've aggregated from each weapon store around. There has been no one dubious. He Chancellor of Humanity, Aristotle trusts that regardless of whether the forecasted legends show up, him facing them will be to no end so they don't have to stress over him by any stretch of the imagination. The Chancellor of the Devil Race, Jim lets Aristotle know that he may not be aware since he recently joined however Her Highness isn't anxious about the forecasted legend. All things considered, she truly wants for him to come. To act in light of that prescience, 
Her Highness accumulated a wide range of old books on enchantment and war strategies to explore. Chancellor of the Beastman Landmass, Mogul accepts she could demolish the legend's mainland in a brief moment in the event that she wills it. Twilia comments that it's the Dolt Hand Truck's shortcoming and is only a heap of garbage which is the reason it's really great for them that Her Highness is administering, which is the reason they can just allow the forecasted legend to kick the bucket. Hand Truck, at first devout minister of mankind and presently leader of the evil spirit sovereign's devoted group of followers and of the counter-forecasted legend affiliation shows up and requires the dismissal of the legend and for everybody to help the rule of the devil sovereign. Discuss a lifelong minimization. Elizabeth unexpectedly gets nobleman with her sorcery and irately requests that he make sense of where the forecasted legend is. Terrified, Cart shakily says the prediction really doesn't need to be totally precise when the objective surpasses the assumptions for the prescience. Wise gets kneeling down and says believe it or not. It's an extraordinary offense to take that dumb prescience and apply it to Her Highness. It is too incredible an offense and Her Highness doesn't have to disapprove in the smallest in light of the fact that the authority has had new discoveries as of late. Out of nowhere, Elizabeth hits him with her tail and advises him to get lost. Elizabeth irately hurls Pushcart into the wall and announces that being the sovereign, she has arrived at the pinnacle of the world and holds the force of the world. She trusts that the unbelievable legend will challenge her so she can make him a venturing stone for significantly more popularity. She has concentrated on every one of the old wizardry books of the legend landmass and has made the Judgment Day wizardry to sit tight for the test after endless difficulties however he is still no place to be seen. She peers down at the sword and snatches it, commenting that since he isn't coming to her, the Chancellor's alarmingly attempt to stop her however she pronounces that she will get to him. She releases generally her power and starts hauling the sword out as Twilia incredibly questions in the event that she's truly going to take out the sacred sword. A tremendous impact ejects, obliterating the roof as Elizabeth at last figures out how to haul the sacred sword out and asks who said just the unbelievable legend can haul it out. She abruptly faculties something far away and finds out where the incredible legend is stowing away. She utilizes her spell-constrained instant transportation seeing which wise attempts to rush to her side, frantically requesting that she have him serve close by yet she immediately vanishes, leaving just a solitary strand of hair. In the novice town, the unbelievable legend calmly cultivates and makes sense of that he goes by Le Ping. As a general rule, he was only a conventional office specialist who carried on with a dull life and wasn't partial to playing computer games or watching anime and his main joy was presumably watching his number one brief recordings en route to work. En route to work one day, he learns the right approach to preparing through shorts and other various techniques, conceding he's desirous and wanting to live like this as well. Unexpectedly, he gets moved to an alternate world from his transport and by and by makes sense of that under the direction of the novice framework. He gradually mastered the fundamental abilities to survive expected for living in this world and knew nothing about this world except for it didn't make any difference since this was the sort of pastoral life he generally wanted and he felt like his body was a lot more grounded than when we has working. He gets a warning from the framework expressing that after this time of novice preparing, he has completely met the circumstances expected to leave the beginner town and can begin his experience now. Le Ping apprehensively questions assuming he truly needs to leave so the framework expresses that subsequent to leaving the town, he will meet a wide range of others in this world and can gain different abilities of blade and wizardry from them, permitting him to turn into the unbelievable legend and kill the evil presence ruler. Unconvinced, Le Ping says he would rather not kill any evil spirit lord and inquires as to whether he can't simply live here. The framework hastily illuminates him that he can't and says killing the evil presence lord is the player's primary mission. It cautions him that the later he leaves the town, the higher the trouble will be the point at which he faces the evil spirit lord and attempts to tempt him by saying he can get fortunes and a wide range of experiences by mastering abilities of blade and sorcery as an unbelievable legend. 
it continues to ask him to start his main goal and leave the town however Le Ping sees that other than constantly irritating him. It doesn't seem as though the framework can really cause something to damage him, so he simply needs to live like this eternity, since there is an extraordinary time boundary here that can totally conceal the beginner town for security and inside the obstruction. A day has definitely over 24 hours of time in sight which likewise empowers him to do the things he appreciates, such as cultivating, hunting, manufacturing and contemplation. Le Ping concedes he actually is clueless about blades and enchantment however since he would rather not go out on an extraordinary experience. It doesn't exactly make any difference. Through trading focuses from beginner undertakings, he gradually constructed his optimal peaceful home without any preparation until, at some point, maddened, the framework irately questions how he simply needs to cultivate in a universe of blades and wizardry and is totally overlooking his ideas. It asks how Le Ping is an unbelievable legend at all when he just knows how he can play with beginner focuses and can trade them for upkeep instruments, since he would rather not try and study blades and wizardry. The framework's different experience helps abilities are of no utilization here which it despises and trusts Le Ping passes on soon in view of the Devil Ruler. At some point, the framework out of nowhere crashes and vanishes. Le Ping goes to set up some kindling first since it is by all accounts running short and he's eager. He recollects that he neglected to bring back his hatchet Da Zhuang from the forest when he went out to cleave wood in the first part of the day. The weather conditions unexpectedly changes. Amazing Le Ping before Elizabeth shows up before him and addresses him as the incredible legend, announcing that they at long last meet. Tragically, Le Ping isn't paying her any notice and races to get his garments and dried fish, believing it will out of the blue rain as she silently watches him. Le Ping fortunately figures out how to make it so as to safeguard his dried fish and wieners since they would have turned sour in any case before the electronic pet canine he was sent for friendship. Wang Kai quickly barks for his consideration. Obviously, even robot canines know the force of sensational timing. Le Ping advises him to remove it and to rush back inside since it's going to rain, yet he out of nowhere gazes upward and sees something drifting overhead, asking Wang Kai what it is. Elizabeth sees that he's very dull and asks how he considered tending to her as something so he briskly explains that he didn't see her obviously, yet she says she ought to check first and shoots a bet at him. Frightened, he drops his fish and hot dogs and gets some information about before rapidly protecting himself from the shaft. He reflexively gets the sacred blade Elizabeth tossed towards him and is astounded to see it. He requests what's happening as Elizabeth comments that the acknowledgement from the sacred blade Alpha can't be off base, yet its enchanted ability to detect is low to the point that even conventional warriors could possibly outperform it. She contemplates whether he's concealing his actual power. She announces that she's Elizabeth, the most grounded evil spirit sovereign in history and today, she will totally destroy him. She starts giving her enchantment a role as Le Ping depressingly questions why the evil spirit sovereign is here when he hasn't even left the town. Wang Kai indignantly snarls at Elizabeth, yet Le Ping attempts to inspire him to quiet down as Elizabeth utilizes pit sorcery, annihilation. Le Ping understands that as the framework said, the gathering between the amazing legend and the evil spirit ruler is unavoidable regardless of whether never leaves this town and proclaims that there's something else to say. He shakily begins taking off from the assault and comments that he's been a finished beginner so far however the evil presence lord out of nowhere comes thumping at his entryway so there's nothing he can do as opposed to tolerating his destiny. At the way to his home, he understands he ought to be content and concedes he regrets absolutely nothing, realizing he could spend such occasions here. He will get back to zero alongside his home. He closes the entryway as Elizabeth irately questions what he did quite recently, thinking he advised her to come at him with all she has. She indignantly says he's unimaginable and fires her enchantment at his home, yet Wang Kai out of the blue completes an estimation and conveys a few rockets and shots that crash into the wizardry before it can arrive at Le Ping's home. As Wang Kai barks at Elizabeth, 
she accepts the legend from the legend thinks for even a second to be so pompous by totally depending on having a stirred otherworldly device with stirred consciousness however before her. Beginning and end is substandard. She projects her prophetically catastrophic wizardry and comments that she has lost all interest in testing further so she will end things here. She fires Earth re-evaluating yet Wang Kai finishes one more round of computations and flames a little impact at her. Nonetheless, Elizabeth proclaims that it's pointless as the Enchanted misses her and advises him to vanish faithfully alongside this land. Suddenly, the spell Wang Kai terminated ends up being a quantum mechanical dark opening that totally swallows her prophetically catastrophic enchantment and vanishes. Stunned, Elizabeth disbelievingly questions on the off chance that her prophetically catastrophic enchantment was recently broken, addressing what Le Ping did inside the house. In the meantime, Le Ping happily lies on his bed while hanging tight for death and stonily advises her to come at him since he's ready. Elizabeth gradually arrives before Wang Kai who continues to bark. She gradually begins chuckling and understands that she is suddenly the person who underrated the legend. She gradually expands her evil hands and develops out her wings, irately telling Le Ping to not get so arrogant on the grounds that up to this point, she has just been utilizing under 30% of her power. She irately pronounces that she will show him what genuine dread is and changes into her devil god structure prior to surging towards Wang Kai. After an hour, Le Ping falls rest and contemplates whether he's kicked the bucket. He gradually awakens and yawns, amazingly understanding he's actually home. He gets up and sees it appears to be very outside, yet shakily contemplates whether the devil sovereign would be sitting tight for him outside like a total insane person. He gradually makes the way for sea weighty smoke covering the region. Elizabeth arises out of the smoke, irately holding a totally separated Wang Kai. Le Ping earnestly calls for him so she discards it and turns towards him, angrily saying sorry for totally annihilating the mystical apparatus he was so glad for. Scared, Le Ping shakily guarantees her that it's all right and inquires as to whether they can plunk down and talk. Elizabeth comments that they can talk after she kills him however unexpectedly begins shaking. Shocked, she says this is mind-blowing and contemplates whether this is the consummation anticipated for her for her since she has been completely pushed as far as possible. She abruptly tumbles down so Le Ping rapidly hustles to her side and inquires as to whether she's all right. Her devilish protection unexpectedly begins disseminating seeing which Le Ping considers what's going on before her garments disappear too. Stunning Le Ping, it ought to have been me, not him. Obviously the Giga Chadmik will see a tent in view. Afterward, Elizabeth is lying on Le Ping's bed with her hands bound behind her and out of nowhere awakens. Incensed, she concedes she, the evil presence Sovereign experienced an embarrassing loss and understands that as opposed to killing her whenever he found the opportunity, Le Ping detained him. She contemplates whether he did that to show his capacity to the world and starts utilizing her wizardry however the binds prevent her from doing as such. She sees that this is another amazing class antiquity. She didn't know about questions exactly how much power he's actually stowing away and checks out the room. She comments that these unusual things are certainly not quite as basic as they look, and he legend is considerably more underhanded than she envisioned, acknowledging she misjudged him. Le Ping is amazed to see that she's conscious however she tells him to not anticipate that she should ask assuming he plans to kill her. He internally concedes the evil presence lord is genuinely terrifying yet this is the main opportunity to make do so he should hold on to it. He anxiously inquires as to whether they can talk all things being equal and explains that he just involved the binds as a safety measure due to how frightening she is. He briskly gets himself and says he did it due to how considerable she is hearing which she confusingly checks him out. Le Ping says he figures there probably been a misconception, and that he'll open the binds until further notice so they can talk. According to Elizabeth's viewpoint, she accepts Le Ping is pronouncing that she has had a misconception all along and inquired as to whether she naturally suspected she was sufficiently impressive to challenge the legend. 
He says she's totally off base and orders her to satisfy his requests on the off chance that she wishes to remain alive. Frightened, she deep down questions assuming that he's attempting to undermine the evil present sovereign before Le Ping opens her binds. He says he's opened the binds very much like he said, so this ought to demonstrate he has no evil expectations and says they ought to talk presently as guaranteed. Elizabeth flexes her wrists and concedes what is happening is truly troublesome for her. Resilient people know when to curve and stretch, so she ought to persevere until further notice however, he will lament his haughtiness later. Le Ping comments that he's certain everybody is interested about why he didn't kill the devil sovereign when she was oblivious, so he makes sense of that in this world brimming with swords and wizardry. It's entirely typical for her as the evil spirit sovereign to have a restoration expertise. Killing chickens and fish for soup is a certain something however he would never kill an individual not to mention somebody as significant as the devil sovereign. In any case, settling the contention between the unbelievable legend and the evil spirit ruler doesn't be guaranteed to require killing and battling, which is the reason the same length as he can show that he represents no danger to her and turns into her companion, he can keep on living cheerfully. He begins gradually laughing due to how splendid his arrangement is nevertheless Elizabeth deciphers it as him ridiculing her. Le Ping inspects Wang Kai's stable totally obliterated structure and comments that he's turned into an all-out wreck. Elizabeth inquires as to whether Wang Kai in the event that Le Ping's most remarkable sorcery device hearing which he deep down says it's no enchanted device. It's only a tad thing he made while living around here out of fatigue. He comments that you could say Wang Kai was created by him as of late hearing which Elizabeth vindictively grins and internally says it's time since it's his chance to be thoughtless. Since the cuffs restricting her have been unfastened, she can covertly utilize chasm sorcery, boundless wizardry to recuperate rapidly, and since Le Ping has lost his most significant enchantment device, it's similar to him losing his right arm which implies the overall influence has shifted towards her. She gets up and apologizes for breaking his things, yet he guarantees her that it's fine since the memory card is still here. She says it is the best time for her to kill him. The unbelievable legend as Le Ping pivots and says the body can be fixed prior to uncovering a cabinet loaded with Wang Kai bodies, making sense of that he'd proactively gotten ready for this sort of circumstance so she doesn't have to stress. As Elizabeth watches in shock, Le Ping calls the memory card into another Wang Kai, and it right away actuates. He makes sense of that it's a good time for have a sidekick, yet it's devious some of the time so he uncommonly just initiates one at home. Elizabeth deciphers this as Le Ping manically snickering alongside his detestable otherworldly device and puts down in dismay. She abruptly smells a fragrance and asks where it's coming from. Le Ping makes sense of that he made a food to warm her up since she swooned out of fatigue. He gives her dumplings and a meat porridge seeing which Elizabeth gradually swallows and her stomach begins moaning. Le Ping happily says these are undeniably produced using the vegetables and grains he developed himself. Totally normal and requests that she have a taste, genuinely thinking tackling clashes with scrumptious food will work. She gradually gets a dumpling and takes a chomp however Le Ping can't ready to let know if her demeanor's changed and apprehensively contemplates whether the evil spirit sovereign with her high status will see the value in these beginner town things despite the fact that he's very positive about his cooking. Notwithstanding, Elizabeth rapidly wraps the plate of dumplings and destroys in light of how delightful it is, commenting that with each nibble. The meat juices burst like firecrackers in her mouth with a characteristic and unadorned flavor as well as containing a high centralization of enchanted energy. She's shocked by the way that this world really has such a delectable delicacy and concedes that even she, the evil spirit sovereign can't tolerate swallowing the last chomp. At the point when she swallows it, she out of nowhere moans in fulfillment before a fountain of liquid magma ejects inside her. She swiftly asks Le Ping what he put inside the dumplings since they're so fiery. Terrified, he makes sense if he added a lit piece bean stew as indicated by his own taste and inquires as to whether she could do without hot food. She enthusiastically acknowledges she was correct from the start since there were no decent goals. 
the malicious legend has detained her fair to involve her as a subject for his examination tests.